beginning to think that the best superpowers have nothing to do with physics as we experience them. Rather, physics on the smallest scales are really cool. Ant-Man has mastered the bizarre quantum realm, and so he has some bizarrely awesome quantum realm-based superpowers. So does the Vision, but we can talk about that later. And one of my favorite new superpowers of Ant-Man's is in Captain America Civil War. So, how does Ant-Man work in reverse? Okay, so spoiler alert if you haven't seen Captain America Civil War yet, but Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. But seriously, spoilers. So in Civil War, one of the biggest, literally, superpowered surprises was Giant Man, the ginormous reverse shrink version of Ant Man. Aside from Spider Man's introduction, it was maybe the coolest scene in the film, so how does Scott Lang vis a vis Hank Pym pull it off? On a previous episode of Because Science, we outlined how an Ant-Man suit might work. If pin particles could transform electrons around an atom into their heavier cousins' muons, then they'd have to orbit closer to the nuclei of those atoms and shrink the size of them, thus shrinking the size of the overall object. Ant-Man! <laughs> what if Ant-Man says that every time? But this explanation doesn't work in reverse. As my friend Spiridon Malakakis, who's a quantum physicist who actually consulted on the first Ant-Man, explained to me, you have a supervillain's name, dude. Own up to it. Or, or like a Pokemon's name. Spiridon tried to determine his position and velocity at the same time. It's undetermined. One reason why Ant-Man can't just reverse shrink into Giant Man is density. If Ant-Man increased his volume without also increasing his mass, then he'd have the density of like a balloon. He would just rise up and float away and be able to do as much damage to things and enemies as a Macy's Day parade float. So instead, we have to go back to the quantum realm to find a real way to get giant. Oh, oh, yes. Now to find a roller coaster and some cars to make real life hot wheels with Kevin. Dr. Spiridon, destroyer of worlds, suggested to me that a special wavelength of neutrinos might be able to get the job done. Neutrinos are just ghostly particles that don't like interacting with anything. They're electrically neutral, so billions could be passing through me, and they probably are, right now, and they wouldn't hit any of my atoms. They wouldn't interact with me. One neutrino could pass through a light year's worth of lead without bumping into any lead atoms. See? It's not even tickling me. Or killing me terribly. These special neutrinos produced by the suit would bypass the electrons and interact with the protons in every atom in Scott Lang's body, producing more neutrons and some positrons, which are just like electrons except they have a positive charge. The new nuclei with more neutrons wouldn't be able to hold the electrons as close to the center because they don't have a charge to help do that, so the size of the atom would increase and therefore the size of the entire object, Scott Lang's body. And those positrons that were created could interact with hydrogen gas, also provided by the suit, to create protons that would help balance the new charges in all of these atoms and all that would be left were some cosmic rays flying out in every direction and hopefully not creating a new Hulk somewhere to destroy a whole planet. If every single atom in Scott Lang's body got this treatment, then they would all become isotopes of themselves, basically the same atom but with more neutrons. And with more neutrons comes more mass and more size as the electrons have to push out from the center of these atoms. Ant-Man! <laughs> What you're left with could very well be a giant man. <laughs> Get it? But one with serious circulation problems. Human physiology can handle some pretty hefty loads, but a 50 foot tall person would weigh many, many thousands of pounds. There's no guarantee that Lang's leg wouldn't just snap under this newly massive body or that his newly enlarged heart would be able to pump all that blood around giant man. Maybe that's why he said that he passed out once when he tried it. And if he urinated at that size, what would come out would be about the same amount of volume as a third of the geyser that is Old Faithful. Hashtag geyser pee. So, if Ant-Man's suit can provide these special neutrinos and hydrogen gas, then all of the atoms in Scott Lang's body can get heavier and larger, producing giant man. I mean, it, it's, it is theoretical, sure but at least it follows the laws of physics more than Captain America's shield does. Can you see why I like it? Because science. Oh! Oh, there's a, oh, there's a spider down here!
Thank you so much for watching. So why does increasing the distance at which an electron orbits around the nucleus of an atom increase or decrease the size of an object? It's because when you touch something, that's what you feel. You're not feeling the thing. You're feeling that thing's electrons. The electrons repel each other, and so they cannot pass through each other. Uh, so it's no exaggeration to say that you've never really touched anything or anyone unless you consider every single particle of someone or something to be a part or that thing or that person. Uh, it's kind of philosophical. It's kind of poetic. It's a lot of science. <laughs>